Hey, this is Professor Triplett, and this is going to be a tutorial on nonlinear deformers. Uh, we're going to go one at a time through the deformers, and um, there'll be a different video for each one of these deformers, and we're going to start off with bend. And let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so I just have this, uh, this uh, cylinder here, and one of the things that I want to note about the cylinder is I purposely have a good amount of subdivisions in it uh, just because I want to be able to make sure that when I do bend this with a deformer it looks nice so let's go ahead and just um, show you how I got this out so of course you go to your deform tab and then you have your nonlinear and if you click on this little uh, I don't know what you call it on top but if you click on it it pops out the menu and you can move the menu around so I'm gonna go ahead and just um, I clicked on bend and so it dropped the bend into my scene I'm gonna go ahead and middle mouse drag this underneath my bend just for cleanliness and now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn my shading to x-ray so you can see what's going on here so once I get my shading in x-ray and I, I select this bend handle you'll see it's got this it's basically just a curve representation of the bend and it's sitting in the middle of the object that it's related to if I select the object you'll notice that the bend turns magenta uh, or I should say this bend uh, deformer object turns magenta and what that's notifying me is that these two are connected okay so if I grab um, the actual bend handle and I turn wireframe I shaded on you would see that now my wireframe for this object is magenta as well so it's it's that relationship that's going on okay so um, one of the things that uh, you may want to do uh, if you're playing with a bend deformer is maybe you don't want to select your mesh and if you don't want to select your mesh um, you can roll out this little tab here usually it's collapsed and this is your selection filter and you can turn off the ability to select meshes so uh, or surface objects and now in the viewport I will only be able to select the deformer uh, not the mesh I can still select the mesh here in my outliner but not in in the uh, in the viewport so I'm just showing you that so in case you're working and you keep trying to grab it and you can't get it um, this is one way to get to it okay so let's go to our channel box uh, you could use your attribute editor or your channel box to the similar settings, but I usually like to go to the channel box because it's a little bit more uh, light and refined. There's less in there. And um, the big thing that we're going to look at here is curvature. So let me go ahead and just, um, I'm clicking on the curvature, highlighting this, uh, this text, but then in my viewport, I'm going to middle mouse drag left and right. And you're going to see that uh, we're going to get this thing to bend. And when it gets to 180 degrees here, which it uh, automatically stops at that, um, it goes ahead and makes basically uh, what looks like a torus. Now, the bend or any of the nonlinear deformers basically can be used for animation modeling purposes. So in this case, um, our tutorials are more based on modeling. So um, I'm just showing that. Uh, so what you could do with a bend, there's actually a lot of different uh, uses for a bend, but one of those things might be, let's say you wanna make a pipe, right? And you need like a 45 degree angle. So you could go ahead and come into here and type in 45, and now you've actually got that, okay? Um, and actually this looks like it would really be kind of a 90 degree angle because if I put in 90, then it's gonna be like a, it's gonna go like 180. So actually you would have to put in for 45, you put in 22.5. So that would be a 45 degree angle. So let's just say this is a 90, you would put in 45, like so. And that's gonna turn 90 degrees. So that's a lot easier to create this type of thing with a bend on a tube than maybe let's say making a torus knot and deleting, you know, three quarters of it and just keeping one little quarter and capping it or something like that or filling the hole I should say so those are all um, terms that we'll talk about later so just disregard that but um, the other thing you could do with this is uh, you can actually you have a low bound and a high bound 
And the low bound basically will allow you to cut off the effect of this bend on the lower part of the mesh. And the high bound is the same thing, just going the other direction. It also, as you can see, if I, if I ramp it up, it actually lets you keep going in a circle. But of course, this mesh isn't tall enough to keep following that. Um, but uh, so let's go ahead and change this, uh, this back to one. And let's change this back to negative one. There you go. So now it's giving full effect. Now the envelope, if we turn this to zero, the envelope will basically turn off and it will, this thing won't affect this at all. So um, basically the envelope is just the relationship of, uh, you know, this thing being connected to this thing. And the one indicates that it's completely on. Uh, later in some uh, of these tutorials, we'll talk about how you can change uh, the envelope uh, through paint weights and actually have a, a custom fall off for the envelope. Uh, so basically um, from this point here, we could show that uh, you can actually select this bend handle, all right? And I can actually move it around and it'll do all kinds of weird things. I can rotate it. So let's go ahead and just rotate this. And as you can see, this thing rotates with it. So, you know, if I wanted my pipe facing a different direction or something, I can go ahead and go like that. Uh, I can rotate it this way. Strange things will happen, okay? And uh, this is just uh, one thing that's good to know is that, that basically um, if you start moving this thing, it's it's got a connection to this mesh and because the envelope's at one, so it's fully uh, waiting, weighted to this mesh, you know, you're gonna get some weird things to happen, but sometimes you actually do want that. Like sometimes you wanna, you can actually manipulate things. So, you know, like let's say it comes off the floor like this pipe comes off the floor and goes at a certain angle. You could do that way. Um, so anyway, that's just kind of an intro into um, the linear, or I should say nonlinear deformers and, uh, and the bend tool. Um, so what I use the bend tool for particularly, um, one thing is like, let's say I create a, a plane here and let's just uh, make this 50 and we're gonna pretend that this is like in the shape of a leaf, or if you're just using it as like a plane to put a leaf texture on, um, you could go ahead and drop a bend on there. And I can, before I change any of my settings here, I can go ahead and, and manipulate this so that it's facing the direction I want it to. So I'm gonna say it can probably go that direction. I'll type in 90 there. And then I can start playing with the curvature. And so I can make a bend on my leaf. Okay, so my leaf has a nice shape to it. Now you could actually take the same object, let's make it selectable, and put another bend on it. And we could go ahead and turn this one this direction. And let's just change it to 90. It doesn't have to be at 90, but I prefer it like that. And we can mess with this bend. Okay, so that's not going the way I actually wanted it, but it could be used that way too. I'm actually going to turn it this way. This is where I wanted to manipulate was here. There we go. So now you can see like how I've kind of made this nice, uh, almost like a, like a canopy shape, which again, there you go. That's another thing you can model with it. You know, you want to model a nice, like a uh, awning canopy thing or something like that. You can use this bend to do that kind of, uh, shape. Um, and so you can see these things can be stacked, they can be modified um, within here. And uh, if you wanna go ahead and get rid of all of these, like let's say I, I think the shape is perfect, I don't want it to move anymore. Um, I can go ahead and just select this object, go to edit, delete by type history. And then what it does is you, if you noticed, you may not have noticed, I'll undo that, control Z. There's all this history, so the bend uh, two, the bend uh, three are on here. Um, and then this tweak, which I'm not sure where that tweak came in, uh, but uh, you know we have our original plane and then the two bends. Uh, they're gonna disappear the moment I delete the history off this object. So delete, oops, wrong delete. Delete by type history, there we go. So now, now this object is basically just set at this place, okay? so. And then um, it's it can't go back 
unless you know you control did an undo or something you can't go back to the way it was uh, and that's just it but you can actually leave those deformers on there and you can manipulate manipulate them later if you want to uh, and that's just a, a benefit of having uh, the system the way it is where you have some history that you can leave on there so that is the Ben deformer and just a little bit more in depth about deformers and in the next video we'll go into flare and and then move on to the, the rest of them after that